us, which are going to focus on the use of automatic license plate readers. Um, that's actually happening this upcoming week on, on Monday. Um, and you know, I think that is the next big place that this is going to go, because in major cities like Washington, D.C. and New York, it is essentially possible to enter or exit the city in a car without having your license plate recorded. It used to be that that information was then discarded after some period of time. Now that stuff is being um, you know, kept indefinitely and pulled into these uh, you know, state or regional or federal databases. Uh, we don't know where the money is coming from. It's probably coming from you know, various federal government sources that are like pushing out the dissemination of this relatively inexpensive technology, right? Um, and so you can never just think, okay, we're gonna solve the cell phone or car location tracking problem, right? There's always going to be, it, it, it's, it is an internal game of whack-a-mole. There's always gonna be another field of play and, and that's the next one. Could you just comment on, so we, we kind of use terms like the government and law enforcement and tracking and all this kind of stuff. It's, it's kind of important to think about how this stuff actually happens, right? So we have a bunch of different entities from the NSA to the FBI to local law enforcement. And it, they have, they also go to conferences like, like this. And in the same way that it's a false um, descriptor to think that everyone in this room has a complete command of all the possible tools out there and research tools with, with security, you know, with, with regards to security. And um, it's also kind of, it's, it's also important to note that long, so there might be some guy in some office in you know, Arkansas that happens to have, uh, happens to need location information for a particular case and happens to either have attended a conference and know how to get uh, to the Sprint um, API to get that data or happens to know a buddy at a different, that's you know, managed to get location information from a different source like OnStar or whatever, and he's gonna go through that process for his case. Right? So it's not this like, you know, uh, big entity with a set of rules, it's that People are trying to solve a case, and they're going to find and get information in whatever way they can, right? And they're going to follow standards sometimes. Sometimes they're going to go around it. Sometimes they have a buddy that's a PI that can get it for them, or sometimes they have a relationship with a particular ISP that they've done in a previous case, and they can call them back up. So it's important to understand the human element and, and try to think about this stuff, because it's not a blanket um, kind of entity trying to think of, 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 of a framework, it's literally, I, I need this data, I'm gonna go and get it from wherever I can, and it's low-hanging fruit, right? So like, since, since you know, the Sprint is currently the Amazon and location tracking, in the sense that, you know, everyone knows about them and they can just go to, go to them. So if you have a target that's a Sprint customer, you're like, hell yeah, I know the URL for that thing, and I'm gonna go and, you know, buy some, buy some, some GPS. But I should also clarify, so we have, what we know is about 1.5 million requests, so, uh, most of the carriers responded to Mr. Markey and gave numbers. T-Mobile refused to give Markey numbers, and then about a week later, they said they got about 190,000 requests um, that year. So we, we know it's about uh, 1.5 million requests. Those are only law enforcement requests. That doesn't include a single intelligence agency request for the simple reason that the phone companies are not allowed to talk about those requests. They can at least give us a number. What they can't tell us the specifics of the requests they receive from police, particularly when the cases are ongoing, but they can just tell us a number. But the requests that they receive uh, in national security cases, the assistance they provide to NSA, that's deeply classified, and so... Although we've learned a fair amount about NSA setting up shop inside the telecoms, right? Well, we know that, well, we, we know that the telcos gave wholesale access, several telcos gave wholesale access to NSA. We know that the FBI placed Oh, sorry, the, the, the FBI paid the phone companies to place telco employees in FBI teams so they could provide easy access, uh, easy, quick access to data. Um, the FBI agents were writing down the names of people on PowerPoint, or on um, post-it notes and then passing the phone guys to see if there's anything suspicious there. But what I want to emphasize here is what we do know is only about law enforcement and the intelligence stuff is likely far scarier and happening, more, it's more likely to be in a wholesale manner. And, the limiting factor here is not going to be the technology, it's going to be the law and the policies. So about uh, four years ago, I got a copy of some slides from a British surveillance company called Fort Glenn. Um, and they provide an interface, a layer to Google Earth that um, telcos can install and, and, and work with, with the government to provide it. And their demo used real-time data in, from Indonesia. So they were giving the Indonesian authorities who purchased the software basically had a Google Earth interface and they could zoom in and see dots on a map of 60 million cell phones. 60 million cell phones 
dots on a map of who were. To me, that's terrifying. So the guys at Fortran, they're proud of it. Um, the, you know, the wonders of their technology. But what you need to understand here is the limitations are not on what is technically possible. It's what the phone companies are giving and what the government is asking for and the government feels comfortable doing. Uh, and also, of course, US law only really protects the communications of US persons, if, if then. Um, and anyone who's abroad, um, their data is really up for grabs. And, and so we should assume that there are millions more requests, million, millions more requests that we will never know about.